Now that we are in a state where the markets have corrected significantly and the most important question is where to invest money in such situation. So one of the approach is to invest in top blue chip stocks with consistent track record of paying good amount of dividend. Because during difficult time, the well established brand with high profitability and high cash flow can easily survive. In fact, it also gives them the opportunity to acquire struggling business and gain more market share. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Purse of France Academy. In this video, I want to discuss 5 stocks that have a consistent track record of paying a good amount of dividend and are currently available at very good valuation. So this would have two way benefits. First is that you will continue to fetch good dividends irrespective of market condition. And second benefit is that since these stocks are available at good valuation, there's a good upside potential in the share price as well. And the best part with these dividend master is that they don't fall crazily because the more they will fall, the higher would be the dividend yield. So let's first try to understand this concept of dividend yield and then I'll discuss how I have approached the shortlisting of dividend masters and finally, I'll share the list of 5 dividend stocks. Alright, let's get started. What is dividend yield? In simple language, dividend yield is nothing but the total dividend paid by the company as compared to its current share price. For example, let's say a company has declared a dividend of Rs 150 per share in last one year and its share price is 2200 rupee. Then its dividend yield would be 150 by 2200 which is 6.8%. Now since this dividend yield is calculated on current market price, it changes every second based on the changes in the share price. So you can't have a fixed dividend yield. For example, let's say you invested in a company that gives a dividend of 150 rupee per share which was trading at 2200, so you got a dividend yield of 6.8%. But let's say in the next one month, the share price jumped to 2800 rupee. In that case, if you buy the stock at 2800, then you fetch a dividend yield of 150 by 2800, which is 5.3 percent. Vice versa, if the share falls to let's say 1800 level, and if you invest at that level, then your yield would become 150 by 1800, which is 8.3 percent. It means if the share price increases, then dividend yield would decrease. And if the share price decreases, then dividend yield would increase, provided the dividend amount has not changed. So your dividend yield would depend upon which price you invested in and of course, what is the total dividend company would pay in the future because the dividend payout is also not fixed. So essentially, if the stock price is falling, then you have a good opportunity to invest as dividend yield would increase. Now before you invest in dividend stocks, you should not just look at the dividend yield but you should also look at the history of dividend payouts. You should make sure that the company consistently pays the dividend on a year on year basis and this is very important. Let's take the previous example. So if a company has paid a dividend of 150 per share in last one year and available at 2200, its yield is 6.8% which is very attractive and you end up investing in the company. What if next year the dividend fall to 50 rupees per share? Now in that case, your dividend yield will drop to 2.2%. So make sure the company has a history of paying a consistently good amount of dividend on a year on year basis. But again, there's a catch with dividend paying companies. Majority of dividend paying companies are from PSU sector and their share price has not grown in last 10 years or it has been very volatile. Or their business growth has been stagnant or declining for years. Now as an investor, you don't want to invest in companies that are not growing in terms of share price. Yes, they might pay a decent dividend but the expectation is that their share price should also appreciate in the future and for that their business should grow. Of course, you can't expect dividend paying companies to grow at a very sharp rate because they are not growth companies. But still, you expect the companies to grow so that they can continue to pay dividend and there's some appreciation in the share price as well. So when I did the research on dividend players, I came across many names, but majority of them have struggled with their growth or their share price has not grown for a long time or share price has fallen significantly. Hence, I have excluded them from my list. Now let us discuss my list of top 5 dividend masters that have a history of paying a consistently good dividend and are currently available at very good valuation. And also, these companies are growing at a decent rate. Number 5th company is the most trolled stock of 2021, none other than ITC. It is one stock that has tested the patience level of its investors for years. 
In fact, between 2017 till 2021, ITC generated a loss of 40% and almost everyone gave up their hopes on ITC. I remember creating an in-depth video on ITC business and was pretty convinced of its future growth. Moreover, the stock was available at very cheap valuation. Today when the Nifty is down 15% from its peak and majority of stocks are down 20, 30, 40%, ITC is trading almost at its all-time high. The stock has generated a return of 25% in last one year. Now as far as dividends are concerned, ITC has consistently declared dividends in last five years. Let us look at ITC dividend history. Now if you look at the dividend history of ITC, it has consistently declared dividend in last five years. So you can see here, it has declared dividend in 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, every year. Now if you look at last one year dividend history, on 3rd of February, it has provided a dividend of 5.25 rupee per share. And then on 1st of July, it has provided a dividend of 5.75 rupee. So in total, it has provided dividend worth rupees 11. Now it is currently trading at levels of rupees 260. That means it has got a dividend yield of 4.2%. So if you divide 11 with 260, you will get somewhere around 4.2% dividend yield, which is pretty good. And you can check it for last previous years as well. And you'll find similar yield year on year. Next, if you look at the revenue and profit growth, look at this. There's a consistent growth in the revenues of ITC year on year. It was 26,500 crore in 12 and currently it is 58,455 crore. So consistency is there. Although the growth has not been that high, it's a CAGR growth in revenue in last 10 years is 8%. And if you look at the profitability, again, there's a consistent growth in the profit, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10, 11, 12, 15, and it is 14. So from 6,000 crore, it is currently at 14,000 crore. Again, consistency is there, but the growth is around 9%, which is not that high, but also not bad for a dividend company like ITC. Now, if you look at the share price movement of ITC, it is currently at levels of 258, and year to date, it has given a return of 17.75%, and in last one year, the return is 21%. And in last five years, if you see, obviously the market, it has fallen quite a lot, 40-50%, but since then it has recovered very well. At current levels of 258, ITC is trading at a P ratio of 21.47, that still looks undervalued to me. So in spite of generating 25% return in last one year, ITC is still looking undervalued. ITC is one of the top companies in terms of free cash flow. In last three years, it has generated a free cash flow of almost 32,000 crore rupees. Hence, one of my top pick for both dividend yield and share price appreciation. Number fourth company in my list is NTPC. NTPC is into the power production and sale. Now there are two reasons for shortlisting NTPC. First is due to huge energy crisis all over the world. So there's a high demand for power. Yes, there's a structural shift from power production from coal to renewable energy, but that won't happen overnight. So still, we have a dependency on coal. So due to high demand for power in near term, NTPC should benefit from it. Second reason is NTPC has also forayed into renewable energy segment and targeting power production of 60 gigawatt from renewable sources by 2032. That would be around 30% of its total power production by 32. Currently, renewable contributes just 7% of total power production. So NTPC should get a re-rating on its renewable energy plan now let us look at its dividend history. Now if you look at NTPC dividend yield, again it has consistently declared dividend in last 5 years. If you look at last 1 year dividend history, it has declared dividend on 20th of January and 21st of July. The dividend was 4 rupee and 3.15. So basically a total of 7.15 rupee dividend in last 1 year. And it has got a current market price of somewhere around 145. It means it has got a dividend yield of somewhere around 4.9%, which is pretty good. Now, if you look at the growth in revenue and profit, again, there has been a consistent growth from 65,000 crore, 75, 80, 82, 100, and currently it is 125,000 crore, which is 1.25 lakh crore. So NTPC is a giant and has got a CAGR rate of 7%. So growth rate in revenue is not that high, but it is still on the consistent side. Next, if you look at the profitability, although profitability is not that consistent. You can see it touched a high of 12,500 and then it fell down, then it was sort of stagnant, then it jumped, then it fell down. But in last three years, if you see, it is consistently increasing from 11,600 to 14 to 16,000. And if you look at 
10 year growth in CAGR it is 5%. So not so consistent as well as the growth is not that high. Now if you look at share price movement of NTPC, it is currently at levels of 144.5 and year to date it has generated return of 14.68%. So again on one side Nifty has fallen, NTPC has generated a decent return. In one year the return is close to 30%. Uh, although if you look at the long term history, it has been an underperformer. So the share price jumped quite a lot in 2008. In fact, from 2010, share fell down quite a lot. However, from those lows, NTPC has recovered quite a lot. Now currently, as we discussed, it has got renewable energy plan and all of that. It can expect a re-rating and at current levels, it is trading just at a P ratio of 9.77. So as far as P ratio is concerned, certainly the valuations are looking attractive for NTPC. Number three company in my list is from IT sector. It is HCL Tech. Now HCL Tech is one company that takes all the parameters of fundamentally strong companies with decent revenue and profit growth year on year. Then high profitability, negligible debt level and a history of paying dividend in last 20 years. So HCL Tech is one company that is consistently paying dividend in the last 20 years. And the cherry on the top is that after the recent correction, HCL Tech is available at a P ratio of just 21. Let us look at its dividend history along with financials. Now if you look at HCL dividend history, again it is one company that has consistently declared dividend in last 20 years. So if you look at last one year dividend history, it has declared dividend on 1st of uh, April, then 24th of uh, December, then 15th of September, then 7th July and 13th of April. So 5 dividends in last one year and the total dividend is somewhere around rupees 60 and it has got a current market price of around 1050 rupee. So if you divide this dividend with the current market price, the dividend yield would come somewhere around 5.7%, which is fantastic. And if you look at the growth of HCL Tech, look at this consistent increase in the revenue from 20,000 to currently at levels of 85,000. That's a brilliant growth. Look at this, a CGR growth of 15% year on year in last 10 years. And if you look at the profit, again brilliant growth in profitability. It was 2400 crore and currently it is 13,500 crore. So look at this increase in the profits year on year. And the CAGR growth is 19%. So brilliant growth in CAGR as well. Now if you look at the share price movement of uh, HCL, it is currently at levels of 1050. And again, year to date it has fallen by 20%. Now, if you look at uh, the valuation at current levels, it is trading at a P ratio of 21.1, which is looking very, very attractive considering the bright future growth prospect, the way it is growing, it has got high profitability, negligible debt to equity, and again, a very high dividend yield. Now, as far as future is concerned, the future of Indian IT sector is very bright. So, HCL should grow at a good rate in the near future. And at current valuation, HCL is available at a stealer deal. Number two stock in my list is Bajaj Auto. Over the past few years, Bajaj Auto has struggled a lot. Earlier, there were demand side challenges and when demand started to improve, auto sector faced your supply side challenges. The recent challenge auto sector is facing is due to semiconductor chip shortage. Moreover, there is a structural shift in auto sector that is now heading towards electric vehicle. And at this point in time, there is no auto company in two-wheeler and three-wheeler segment that has emerged as a leader in electric vehicle. In fact, a lot of new players have emerged in electric vehicle space. However, I would still bet on traditional leaders in auto sector and hence Bajaj Auto is my pick. It has been a very profitable company with strong leadership and has been a very popular brand in every part of the country. Bajaj Auto has already launched the electric version of Bajaj Chetak and I believe that once the auto sector would revive, Bajaj Auto will also bounce back. Let us look at the dividend and its revenue and profit growth. Now if you look at Bajaj Auto dividend yield, again it has consistently declared dividend year on year, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, year on year it has declared dividend. Now and we look at the one year dividend, on 27th of April it declared dividend rupees 140. So basically 140 is the dividend and it has got a current market price of somewhere around 3700. So Bajaj Auto has got a dividend yield of somewhere around 37 to 3.8% which is pretty decent. And if you look at the growth in revenue and profits, again the growth has been stagnant and one of the reason is because of the stagnation in the auto industry. So for last 4-5 years it was stagnant and then it fell down and again it has gone up and CGR growth is 5%. 
Now, if you look at the profits, again, profits have been sort of stagnant. So between 2012 to 15, profit didn't go up. And then there was an increment. Then again, for three, four years, it didn't go up. There was a slight jump, then fell down. And then now it is at levels of 6,100. So all in all, the growth is not that consistent in profitability and CGR growth is around 7%. However, I expect auto industry to revive from here. And once auto sector will revive, I expect Bajaj Auto to do well in terms of both revenue and profit growth. Now, if you look at the share price movement of Bajaj Auto, it is currently at levels of 3,640. And year to date, stock has jumped 11% in last one year. Stock has fallen quite a lot, so it fell down almost 27-25%. Uh, and then currently, the fall is 15% in last one year. All in all, if you see, it is 5.37%. Again, if you look at five-year movement, the returns are not that good. But like I said, once auto sector would recover, I expect Bajaj Auto to also do well. Now, if you look at the P-E ratio, it is currently at levels of 17.08, which is looking very reasonable for a company like Bajaj Auto. Now, final stock in my list is from small cap sector. It is Polyplex. Polyplex has a market cap of just 7,000 crore. Now, interestingly, in spite of being a small cap company, Polyplex is one of the consistent dividend players. By the way, Polyplex is basically into your film manufacturing in flexible packaging industry. For example, it manufactures retort pouch, wafer bag, rice bag, etc. Then it is also involved in solar panel back sheets, wire and cable overwrap, etc. Let us look at the dividend and its revenue and profit growth. Now, if you look at Polyplex dividend yield, again, it has consistently declared dividend in last five years. It has declared dividend on 14th of February, then 15th of November, then 25th of May, then 16th of August. So in last one year, it has declared dividend four times, three interim dividend and one final dividend. A total dividend declared is rupees 100 per share. So if you look at it, it has got a current market price of somewhere around 2330. And that with that, it has got a dividend yield of somewhere around 4.2%, which is pretty good. Now, if you look at share price movement of Polyplex in last one year, the share has generated a return of 113%. So this is one company that has consistently grown in last one year. In five years, the growth has been 399%. And so basically currently at levels of 2330 and look at this, even at that levels, it is at a P ratio of just 14.39. So still in spite of growing more than 100% in last one year, it is looking very reasonable in terms of its valuation. So in this video, we discuss the five stock with a consistent history of providing high dividend and have a very high dividend yield. This provides dual benefit of consistent earning in the form of dividend as well as share price appreciation in the long term. My list include ITC, NDPC, HCL, Bajaj Auto and Polyplex. All these companies have high profitability, consistent revenue and profit growth and negligible debt levels. And the best part is that after the recent correction, they are available at a very good valuation. So what is your take on this? Have you invested in any of these shares? Let me know in the comments. To learn more about identifying quality stocks, you can explore my online course on money management. I hope you'll find this video useful. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.